Jerry Holmes is the director of IT with the Canadian Cancer Society of Ontario. Jerry, thanks for being with us today. Welcome. Um, give me a little bit of general background about uh, about the enterprise network. For so the the uh, Canadian Cancer Society Ontario division operates the society's business in Ontario. We have thirty five offices in most of the uh, cities in Ontario stretching from Ottawa to Windsor, from Toronto to Thunder Bay. We are currently connected with an MPLS network that joins up all our offices. Most of them, the local access is DSL. And, and that's important because it's, it's not a high bandwidth uh, capability, but uh, it is important for all the information that we have uh, to collect, giving access to the centralized applications, the, constituent relationship management systems, the transportation system that we operate, email, major function, um, the server, the file server functions. And on top of that, over all of that, we have a backbone-based uh, voice over IP phone system that is operating over this network as well. Okay. Um if the, the network has changed a lot in the last five years. In the last five years, uh, yes. Uh, um, it was a uh, LAN extension network uh, five years ago. We realized that we needed to improve on that just to be able to carry some of the uh, traffic that we wanted to do. And we also, it was a hub and spoke network. So every uh, point of connection came into the data center and went out. And we knew we were going to be upgrading the phone system. You don't want to create a pipe uh, into a central point where all the traffic had to go. So if you were making a phone call from Barrie to Hamilton, you did not want to be going through the data center in Toronto to, to do that. MPLS is a multi-point traffic network and, and uh, allows us to avoid using up all the pipe traffic in one, one location. Um, what, what was the typical branch office like five years ago? Was there was a, um, we had a, everything was local, except the central services of email and uh, the uh, CRM uh, system that, w that was in Toronto. Uh, the local server wasn't really a server. It had server software on, but it was also the unit manager's PC. So it was a PC, it was a file server, it was a print server, it was a, the local domain controller. We had a total distributed domain control uh, on the network. We had a security audit, and the security audit pointed out s substantially the weakness of having somebody access the domain controller locally. On top of that, the disks on the PC were single disks. There was no RAID, no uh, mirroring. So if you lost it in the daytime, you would lose everything on it. We tried to back it up over the network overnight. Um, and that was successful most of the time. But the larger the office, the more likely that you were going to have a problem or you were not going to be able to complete the data transfer overnight. And, and that was a significant issue. Um, and if you had a problem and didn't get to do the backup, then that could mean that there's two days or three days work on the local file server. And so you re-engineered the network. We did a couple of things. Um, we started on a project uh, with one of the, you know, a small company that, that we were dealing with. and. We were looking to implement VMware in our central uh, office just because our uh, computer infrastructure, a lot of it was quite old. We had servers that were going on 10 years old. Um, one that my local service manager kept running because it was near his desk and he liked the heat that came out of it. And, uh, but outside of that, once we started down that path, we were talking with our channel partner about um, what we could do with the computers in the local office. We were and actually budgeted to replace them all with server class uh, 
certain devices that would allow us to run, you know, RAID in the, in the local office, get that protection in there, because we weren't really looking to upgrade the network. Um, but for those offices that had a lot of problems doing the backup, we were going to have to do the network. And that's where they suggested a new product that they had started picking up. So this is about five years ago, um, called the Riverbed Steelhead device. And there was a webinar coming up a couple weeks after we started talking to them. And we signed up and, and watched the webinar. And it was, well, it was amazing. You know, I mean, they were talking like 89, 90% reduction of uh, data over your network. And, you know, we looked at that and said, you know, if, if we could do that, we could take those servers out of there, the file server functions, and, and put them in the central office and consolidate them on one virtualized server. And I'll be able then to do backups, at data center class, and, and do um, just the reliability of the hardware. Because we, we'd have server failures, and you'd have to replace them, and it was expensive. Um, they, we thought, now, it's a technology. So we looked at them. We went and looked at a few others, the Juniper product, the Cisco product, um, even another product uh, from a company called Teleoip, which was based in Toronto, and they had a similar product. When we did some investigation on those, what we found was we were going to have to change our network. We had to make routing changes to enable the technology of the other ones. And the Riverbed product didn't do that. You just plugged it in, and, and it was in line. It worked. Um, you didn't have to do anything. So that was really interesting. Um, we wanted to run a pilot, so we worked with the channel. They arranged for the computer hardware. We put the, the riverbed device in the data center. We went to one of the branches and we put it in. And then it was important for us as part of the test to uh, ship the uh, riverbed device out to the local office, give them instructions on how to plug it in, and they were able to plug it in. So the secretary in the office plugged in the riverbed device in the network. Um, we turned it on. We had, um, we didn't really explain to them why. We brought the uh, file server, the contents of the file server back to the data center just through our normal overnight backup and put it on a file server in Toronto. Turned off the function in their local office. Using the riverbed, they were now accessing their local file server functions uh, in the central office. And it was an interesting day. In the afternoon, we had to turn the riverbed off for some reason, and I can't remember why. Within 20 minutes, we had a phone call from the local office. What have you done to our email? <laughs> now, email was always centralized. They didn't notice the file server functions. They had noticed no um, degradation in that. They still thought it was local in their office, so they weren't going to complain about that. But email, that dramatic improvement in email access and the data coming down for email had been so significant through the day that when we turned it off about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, it just kind of went, oh. and And they were just what have you done? Why is everything running so slow? With that, it didn't become much of a problem justifying why we were going to go out and do this. And rather than put upgrade the file servers in the local office, we just pulled them out. I mean, we got rid of the domain controller function in there. It really hadn't been necessary in the first place. Um, we put the brought the file server functionality back into the data center. Um, we put the network in there. And now the performance on the DSL circuit was just humming. Yeah. Um, they were, didn't have any problems with uh, data. Um, about a year after that, we were looking to upgrade our phone systems. We had an old uh, Nortel uh, small office switches in each uh, one of the offices. When it failed, they lost everything. Um, and we had a couple of instances where it failed, and they even lost all their voicemail. Um, 
we were using MyTel in our uh, data in our call center. And so when we looked at solutions, we didn't want to touch the call center. So it became kind of the easy choice to say, let's put MyTel everywhere. And when we started to look at it, we realized that there was an option to centralize our voicemail. And we could do it over the data network. It was only a, not that much traffic. And we'd had one other requirement that had started us looking at the voice systems was to be able to do warm transfers between offices from a, a unit office in the field to a central function in the call centers and that. And when you think about the kind of work that we do, um, you know, people phoning us up because they've got a cancer question or they're looking for some form of service and they need to talk to somebody, it's really cold to say, well, here's an 800 number mm -hmm. phone this, as opposed to saying, hang on a second, we'll transfer your call to someone that can actually help you, who could be right on the other side of the province. And, and that was important to the people in the field that were offering these services, something they really couldn't do before. So we put the phone systems in and to do the warp transfer you kind of set up an integrated office function with four digit dialing uh, capability across the province hooking up all the phone systems centralize the voicemail um, and actually we're able to make it uh, redundant we have a voicemail server in Toronto one in Hamilton they're able to, to copy the, the voicemail in there if one of them fails so what and we were talking earlier, um, uh, we were discussing about uh, this is, um, these, these are virtualized servers, centralized uh, in the data center, um, and that sounds like private cloud. Um, but we were talking earlier, I, I thought a private cloud was a data center. It is, but I mean, a private cloud is um, what I've learned. After I built it, <laughs> then they told me I had a private cloud. Uh, we. When you look at it, the cloud is really your, your network. And if you're offering services off your network where the end user doesn't care where they are, and you're able to take advantage of um, centralization or um, redundancy in two offices, uh, two data centers, and it's controlled in there, but the uh, network is totally internal so it's a private network a private cloud if you looked at your network diagram and you're offering the services off it those become private cloud services and you get to control a uh, different kind of network uh, security um, that if you're worried about going out on a public uh, access so out on the internet the public cloud then uh, you have that capability. It wasn't so much a security consideration for us as it was being able to offer the services not only in a secure fashion, but the reliability of being able to access that, that data, the ability to back it up properly, the ability to create a, a DR site that would allow you to assure delivery um, using Virtualized servers means that uh, in your virtualized farm, you're not really um, locking yourself into a hardware. If a server fails, everything just kind of fails over to another server in the farm and we redistribute the load and it has minimal impact. So since that's happened, um, we've never lost service to any of our clients in the field inside the society because of a failure of a server itself that we're, we're protected in that. All over the relatively the same network that we had before. Jerry, thanks very much. You're welcome.